Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about the Bag Strapper Curiouser and Curiouser Fabrics by Tula Pink. The book review will be for a book called Quilts for Baby and Beyond. I'll be demonstrating how to make nice smooth straps and there's a great live giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson and you are watching Social Sunday. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in for the show. So happy to have you here. Um, a few reminders before we get started and our comments are working this week, so yay for that. Um, uh, just a reminder um, for July 11th, July 18th, which is today, and for the July 25th show, those giveaways for those three shows will be live giveaways. So normally we have a giveaway at the end of the show and you have one week to get uh, your entry comment in for that prize. We decided to do just um, three shows with uh, live winners and bigger prizes. So your entry for uh, tonight, if you happen to be watching live, is uh, a comment. So. Be sure to leave comments throughout the show. Um, I have some questions to ask you. Make sure to answer those questions in the comments. You're welcome to say hello to everyone else, where you're from, all of that goes. So um, be sure to get in some uh, comments in to be uh, entered for that random drawing at the end of the show. That will be a live drawing. Um, I see everyone's already leaving their uh, comments. I saw Dee Dee was watching, Debbie's also watching. And uh, Sarah says, happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, very happy Sunday it is. Um, also another reminder, our July challenge is underway up on the blog. So this month's challenge is, um, you have two options for this month's challenge. Either the Palomino pouch from Minikin season three or a beach themed bag. There's a few requirements to go along with that, which you can read over on the blog. The link is in the description and um, it'll be a so sweetness project for your beach themed bag uh, we saw one question come in uh, before the show started if it needed to be a so sweetness pattern or if it could be any pattern uh, for these challenges um, that'll be a so sweetness pattern and again you can read the full details over on the blog so um, today the notion of the week actually tonight's notion as well as the demonstration are both strap themed um, so this is something I've been saving in my stash for quite a while and finally get to share it with you tonight so um, I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you um, the strapper set so Danny's gonna zoom in um, so you can see this in a little bit more detail so this set comes with three different sizes and by sizes that means uh, size of the opening so either two inches one and a half inches or one inches and these are acrylic uh, as you can see green acrylics um, Danny if you're able to zoom in if not that's okay uh, there we go okay so you can see and they're housed in uh, a bit of foam for protection which is really nice and it comes with a brief instructions for options on how to use these acrylics so the nice thing about these particular acrylic templates is the openings are a little bit bigger to accommodate your fabric as well as your interfacing that you're using for your straps. So either if you're using Pell and Shape Flex, if you're using uh, fusible fleece or fusible batting, all of those will fit through the openings in the acrylic templates. And um, there's a few different options as far as pressing. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to be shooting for one inch wide finish straps. So to do that with these templates, I'm going to be using the two inch template followed by the one inch template. And depending on what you're doing, you might need to um, do a little bit of math in your head beforehand, but um, there's also some helpful tips that came with the instructions. So I've already got my fabric. This is quilting cotton, and I already fused it before the show to pull on shape flex. And I've got my iron set up. Um, you'll need some either pins or the instructions that came with the templates recommend um, forked pins. I don't have any forked pins, so I'm just using my regular pins. And I'm going to start off, um, because I want a one inch wide finish strap, I'm going to start with the two inch strapper piece. And um, this is also noted in the instructions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball uh, my pieces toward the center. And if you feel more comfortable, you could certainly press a little 
a small section first in half wrong sides together. So uh, I'll just go ahead and do that just so I have a nice clean center point. And then you'll just want to iron just a few inches to get everything started. Okay, so after you do that, you'll be inserting the fabric into the strapper piece. So the instructions recommend having this curved edge near the bottom so that you can hold on to it. I did, did a bit of practicing with these tools and just personal preference, I just prefer the rounded piece at the top because I found that while I'm using it, I kind of like to hold it with my fingers like this and slide it along. But uh, either way, I highly recommend practicing with the tools on some scrap fabric first so that you can get a bit more comfortable with it and then you can start in on the fabric for your bag. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this a little bit over. I'm going to take two of the pins and I'm just using my wool pressing mat. Um, I also practiced uh, inserting the pins through my ironing board and it worked out just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert those pins just to hold everything down. It's really helpful to have everything held down so when you're pulling and tugging on the fabric, your fabric doesn't go flying across your board or your ironing board. Okay, so I'm going to grab my iron. I'm using the magic pins, so these are silicone tipped pins, so I can actually touch them with the iron. And uh, as I said, this is how I felt. Uh, I liked to hold it. And as I go along, I kind of smooth out the fabric ends. And I'm just going to go ahead and press this along the entire length of the fabric. And like I said, practice a few times to get a hang of using the tool. I'm just going to iron a few inches uh, rather than the whole entire length of the strap but you will be indeed uh, ironing all the way down the length of the strap. So I'm gonna remove this piece. Now, you have a couple options. You can either go ahead and just press this uh, in half to get your finished strap piece, or you can take, uh, in my case, it'll be the one inch strapper and uh, insert that on the, the tool. So I'm gonna first iron just the very beginning, just like I did with the two inch strapper piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide this and insert my pins. Okay, so same as before, because I iron, only ironed a few inches, I'm not gonna be able to go all the way down, but again, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this piece and it brings the fabric together so you can get um, a nice clean pressing. So um, again, this is the strapper set. Uh, it's designed, designed by Pauline Rogers uh, from Australia. And as I mentioned, it includes uh, these three different size uh, strapper pieces. So if you're interested in finding out more about this, um, the link is in the description. Okay, so while I get some of these things out of the way, Smudge, uh, the horse I ride, is was a little bit sore this past week. So I was riding uh, a different horse and uh, her name, funny enough, is Sarah and it's even spelled the same as my name, S-A-R-A, no H. Um, so I had great fun riding Sarah this week. Uh, we actually have a, don't laugh, but we have a, a horse, horsey treadmill at my barn. So my old barn didn't have uh, such a thing, but the purpose of the, the treadmill is um, sometimes when horses are injured, um, oftentimes they're not being ridden, but they still need to move around and keep things loose and, and moving. And so um, they get, uh, at the old barn, we would hand walk them. So just walking with them up and down the aisles, but now we have this horse treadmill. And so the horse just goes uh, on the treadmill. It, it just, it's similar to a treadmill for a person uh, with the, the rubber that just kind of keeps moving that they walk on, obviously longer for a horse. And so I was getting her ready on Friday um, and, uh, I was putting in uh, some of the horses, especially the thoroughbreds, get uh, what's called ear puff. I call them ear puffies, but just a, a wad of cotton, a little bit bigger than a cotton ball, one in each ear, and it kind of muffles some of the sound to keep them um, a little bit calmer. And so I had, I was putting the ear puffies in her ear, and then the treadmill started going with another horse on it, and she was very alarmed by the treadmill. So. Uh, the whole ride was spent trying to minimize the effects of hearing the treadmill, so getting, you know, for riding further away in the arena where she couldn't hear it or see it out of the corner of her eye. And then uh, it was this whole thing with the treadmill. But uh, I just wanted to share with you because I, I just thought it was so fun that her name was Sarah. There's, there's another horse at my barn. Her name is Olivia, and her owner is also named Olivia. So I just thought it was uh, highly amusing. But... Nonetheless, um, set is ready and I'm ready to talk to you about 
fabric that I've added to my stash recently. So th this is all fabric from Tula Pink's line called Curiouser and Curiouser. Daddy is going to switch back over to the overhead camera and let's see, maybe, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm starting with my favorite print of the line. This is a, a dark purple background. Love the bright colors. Um, if you guessed, uh, this fabric line features uh, Alice in Wonderland. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip through the fabrics. I did not organize them according to colorway just because, uh, I don't know. I will organize them according to colorway once I add them, fold them on my comic book boards and add them to the shelf, but for now they're just uh, in random fabric order. So this is probably my favorite print out of the whole line. Love the dripping roses, love the bright colors. Um, I kind of like this lime green background in this particular one. Here's the same print with uh, different colors. Love these kitties, uh, super cute. <laughs> And then here's a design I'd probably use for a lining. I, I love the sort of monochromatic colors. This is the Queen of Hearts. This is a large scale print, as you can see my hand next to it. Uh, the focal print is quite large. Uh, let me open it up actually so you can see the full repeat, if I can get it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so as you can see, it's quite large. Love the little pink hearts in the background. Of course, teacups, because it's Alice in Wonderland. I've got the three colorways over here of the teacups. Um, some little roses. This is the smallest print in the line. Well, no, the second smallest print in the line. Uh, there's more roses later to come. I, I see them further down in the, the large stack. And most of these I purchased, uh, most of them I purchased one yard cuts or one and a half yard cuts, depending on the print. Some of the large scale prints, um, like Alice, which is coming next, I ordered maybe a couple of yards. So I'm trying to, I don't know, be a little bit more frugal, uh, sort of starting to run out of room on the, the fabric shelves downstairs. So I had to keep uh, myself in control for uh, this fabric line because I'm always buying tons and tons of Tula. All right. Okay, and here's one more Alice print. This one's with the yellow background. I'm gonna pull that so you can see it a little bit better. I super love the design on these two fabrics. These are the two colorways that it comes in. This is actually a really dark purple, so this isn't this is not a black background on this one. And this is more of a cream background, not a bright white. Okay, here's one more of those uh, dripping flowers, and then here's another of the small flower print. And then the last two I've got in my stack are these two right here. So love all of these, love the bright colors, and uh, link is in the description in case you're interested in checking out these fabrics after the show in case you don't have them yet already. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, what is your favorite uh, Disney character? I realize Alice in Wonderland is a Lewis Carroll book. However, I think most people are familiar also with the, the Disney movie, Alice in Wonderland. So let me know your answer in the comments. My favorite Disney character is Eeyore. So I actually have a, an Eeyore stuffed animal that I sleep with. When my kids were younger, they each used to pick out uh, a stuffed animal for me to sleep with and every night it would be different. So they pick one out, oh, mommy, here's your stuffed animal, and th that's what I would sleep with. And lately I've just been sleeping with the Eeyore, and uh, I also have a bearded dragon stuffed animal. So those are the two current ones uh, on my bed right now. So um, moving along to the book review, um, I am a huge fan of Jaybird Quilts, and earlier this year she came out with a book called Quilts for Baby and Beyond. And um, I'm gonna have Danny switch over to the overhead camera and I'm going to share with you some photos of some of the projects in the book. So starting off, the, the first section of the book is um, quilt basics, how to bind a quilt. Um, the patterns in this book go along with the Jaybird Quilts acrylic template rulers. However, if you don't have them, those are just optional. The templates are in the center of the book, so you don't necessarily need to buy the templates, but I have all of them and they certainly make um, cutting um, every, all the pieces out much, much faster. So there's a couple options as far as um, 
cutting out your fabric for the projects. If you'll notice, I have some bright post-it notes uh, covering some of the directions out of respect to the designer, but um, I still wanted to show you the, the photographs in the book of all the projects. So there's a few pillows. I think I, no, I didn't miss one. Okay, so the zigzag pillow over here, and then there's a couple, I think I might have missed the black and white pillows. Oh, here they are. Um, there's a couple black and white pillows, one made with small triangles, and then there's another one ma made with large triangles. Um, this quilt is called Twice the Fun. So these are all smaller, if you'll notice, baby-sized quilts. Uh, this one's 36 by 42. And these were all photographed with uh, Julie's family, and this is her son, Nate. <coughs> Rookie of the year, so this is uh, sort of a round quilt. Um, Julie uses this for in the stroller so there's no corners to get caught in the wheels. As you can see behind my post-it notes, all of the quilts are accompanied by very detailed instructions, full color illustrations. Here's another um, photograph of that uh, in the round quilt. Another quilt called, um, let's see, Cuddles. This one's called Cuddles. <clears throat> and there's a couple options for the Infinity Stones quilt, either a four-sided quilt or a, a second option, which is this one pictured right here. Tummy Time All-Star. I super love this. I love the Roy G. Biv. Most of the quilts are a rainbow theme, but I especially love this one. This one's called Color Wheel. And then one more, this one's called Gradient. So this is the largest project in the book. Um, oh, there's one more, sorry about that, one more. Um, again, the rainbow in all of these quilts really caught my eye. I've made a few Jaybird quilts projects in the past and I was always really happy with how they turned out and I really enjoyed the process of working with those uh, acrylic templates in addition to Julie's patterns. So again, the book is called Quilts for Baby and Beyond and there's 12 projects included in the book. So fabulous book. I was really happy to add this to my collection and trying to decide which one I should make first because uh, I, I don't know, they all look so amazing to me. And um, again, the link is in the description in case you're interested in checking out that book. So. I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, what is your favorite or best baby item, uh, be it uh, a quilt, a particular type of bottle? Let me know in the comments. It's been some time since my kids were babies, but my favorite baby item by far was a baby carrier that I had by the company Beco, which is spelled B-E-C-O. It was amazing. I got it. Um, before Violet was born and I used it probably used the stroller a handful of times and I used that baby carrier every single day so I still have it um, I kept using it as long long as I possibly could and I just adored I adored that baby carrier <laughs> all right uh, keeping with today's uh, strap theme I'm going to be demonstrating how to make uh, smooth straps so let me get some of my materials over here and then I'm going to have Danny swap back over to the overhead camera. All right, so what I mean by smooth straps. So um, the recommendations that I'm going to be talking about, I certainly don't use them all the time, but I thought it would be nice to talk about them in case you wanted to implement any of these um, recommendations for getting smooth straps. So what I mean by a non-smooth strap is sometimes you're probably familiar with after top stitching a strap, it might be a little wavy. Usually once you sew it into the finished bag, um, that problem solves itself, but um, there's certainly a few things that you can do in order to avoid that waviness and then just get that strap started off with completely smooth once you pull it off the sewing machine after top stitching. So the first and most simplest thing that you can do is cutting your fabric along the grain rather than cutting it from selvage to selvage. So what I mean by that, so I've got a bolt of fabric here and let me flip this over so you can see, oh, that side looks kinda 
dirty and dusty. All right, so here's my bolt of fabric. As you can see, the selvage is on one, on one end. So what I'll often do when I'm cutting my straps is I cut the strap from selvage to selvage. So I'll just cut, if I need a four inch wide strap, I'll just take my ruler and cut four inches all the way across from selvage to selvage. However, the first step of things that you can do to avoid waviness instead of cutting that direction is to cut parallel to the selvages. Doing this might, you might need to have a little bit of extra fabric, but if you cut along the selvage, say the four inches along the selvage instead, that'll greatly help um, in regards to avoiding that waviness that I was just talking about earlier. So another thing that you can do to avoid that waviness is when you're top stitching your strap, if you, let me pull out this cotton strap uh, so you could see the stitches. All right, so if you stitch your strap in the same direction going both ways. So often what I'll do is, because I like to use a certain area of my presser foot to line up for top stitching, what I'll often do is I'll stitch it from this direction and then when I'm coming back down the other direction, I'll flip it over. So that way will result in some waviness. To avoid that, all you need to do is stitch it in the same direction going both ways. So um, sewing it uh, this direction and then just moving it over and sewing it from the same direction on the other side so the fabric is moving in the same way. Another and third method to avoid wavy straps is to use either a bit of twill tape, which I have here, and let me pull out a little bit of that so you can see what it looks like. It's quite thin, although very sturdy. So you can either use twill tape or you can use grill grain ribbon You'll want to look for a grill grain ribbon that doesn't have a pattern to it, so a solid color like this will be nice and flat. Either of those will work for this method, and you can either use the ribbon that's the same width as your finished strap, or you can purchase ribbon or twill tape that's slightly less wide. So for this demonstration, I'm using for a one inch uh, wide, actually I cut this wrong. Um, I meant to cut it two inches wide. Let me quickly cut this in half just so I can properly demonstrate. So, all right, I meant to cut two inches wide because I wanted a one inch wide cork strap and I just wanted the two layers of fabric. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that really quick. So because the finished strap is going to be one inch wide, I have either tool tape here, this tool tape is three quarters of an inch wide or the grill grain ribbon is seven eighths of an inch. So both slightly less than the width of the strap. Um, in doing that, you'll reduce uh, either some of the ribbon showing or if you're using this method with quilting cotton, you'll avoid having um, extra tape kind of uh, bulked up in the, the pressing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my twill tape the length that I need. And again, this is obviously not a full long strap just for the demonstration. And I'm going to use a bit of washable fabric glue just to kind of temporarily hold this twill tape down. So again, you can use either the, the ribbon or the twill tape. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that down. And then I'm going to take my Wonder Clips and I'm just going to go ahead and fold this over so that both of the edges are aligned. And then after that's secured, you, just, you can just go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch as you normally would. And this piece right here, I top stitched before the show and I actually opted to go with two lines of top stitching just to securely hold that in place. And what that will do, um, even with only the two layers of the cork fabric, the, the twill tape or the ribbon is, uh, it's, not going, it's not bending, it's not stretching. Having that in there will be extra stability, especially with the thinner layer of just the, the two layers of cork, vinyl, or leather. It's also, it's also possible to use that in uh, a pressed uh, quilting cotton strap. Like I was showing you earlier with that uh, strap or acrylic template, you can go ahead and cut the twill tape or the ribbon and insert that before top stitching as well, just like you did with the the cork. So what I would do here again, you can, if you wanted to use the washable glue stick to hold the twill tape in place, just slide that in there and then refold. Obviously you'll want to press this first 
and then attach some wonder clips and then go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and top stitch and again super sturdy nice smooth straps so i hope you enjoyed that demonstration for the smooth straps um, i'll try to certainly <laughs> when i'm working on my videos try to utilize some of those uh, techniques in my own sewing sometimes i'm just in a hurry and i just want to get in get in there and get everything finished but certainly it's the little details that make everything look just a little bit more professional. So um, I'd like to invite uh, all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness Squad. Danny and I are so happy that you're here for Social Sunday um, and we really appreciate uh, you supporting us. We are so excited to hit 100,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel and whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, Thank you so much for uh, tuning in on Sundays for Social Sundays. So, thanks for hitting the likes as oh, well. Yes, Danny says thank you for hitting the likes as well. Um, obviously, you might already be subscribed. So, I'm going to be uh, answering some questions in just a minute, um, and then we also have our live giveaway at the end of the show. So. Uh, if you're watching up until this point, make sure you watch all the way up until the end because I have a really great live giveaway. Uh, we'll be draw drawing the winner live out of all of the comments that we re we've received tonight so far on the show. So if you haven't left a comment yet, be sure to get your comment in. It can be just a simple hello. You can ask me a question. All of that goes. Go ahead and type that in the comments right now. And um, with that being said, Danny's going to be putting some questions on the screen for me to answer live. So if you have a question for me, you can go ahead and type that in right now. It can be um, a general bag making question, question about a notion or tool, sewing question. Uh, I'll answer as many questions as I can live. So Lisa says, question about the monthly challenge. Does it have to be a sew sweetness pattern we alter or can it be any pattern? So um, the link to the July challenge is in the description. Um, yes, it, it should be a Sew Sweetness uh, pattern and the full details for this month's challenge are in that link. So go ahead and click over after the show and you can read the full details as well as enter a photo of your finished project there. Um, Randy says, any suggestions for getting my linings to not look baggy and loose? So um, sewing a slightly larger seam allowance uh, will help. Um, in a nutshell, you'll start with the seam allowance as called in the pattern for sewing your lining, and then gradually veer to a larger seam allowance. So for example, if the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, you can slightly veer toward a half an inch and then back down to a quarter of an inch when you reach the opposite end so that you're still keeping the same seam allowance, but you're kind of tightening up, especially the, the center part of whatever part of the lining that you're sewing together. And I actually have a video on my YouTube channel um, how to how to get a tighter lining and you can um, watch that technique video and in that video I demonstrate exactly how to do that. Monique says suggestion for a bag to hold uh, knitting blocks. So actually I don't think I can reach it behind me um, but the amethyst project bag is perfect for holding your quilt blocks in progress. It'll hold uh, 12 and a half inch quilt blocks as well as other notions and tools and uh, we do have the pattern for that as well as an optional video on the website and you can find that at sewsweetness.com. Um, Anita says no two and a half inch ones. Uh, you know the strapper set, it was just these three sizes. I think after, after working with these tools, I thought it would be interesting, uh, although I, got, I suppose more costly to have different sizes because as you saw in that demonstration, I used the two different sizes to get the one inch wide finished strap um, but uh, yeah, there's certainly workarounds for if you need different sizes and there's some suggestions for different styles of straps in the little sleeve or booklet, uh, what have you, that came with those acrylic templates. Deborah says, Sarah, have you tried the sew tight magnets instead of pinning or using clips? I was thinking of trying them to use with bag making. I can't remember if I used that in a Social Sunday video yet. I know I certainly used it in a few videos for um, to go along with some of my patterns, but I super love the Sew Tight Magnets. We have them in a few different uh, packets and strengths on our website. The ones that I like the best are, I'm trying to look around to see if I have any, uh, oh, I do have some in my Wonder Clip cup. So 
The Sotite's regular strength are like the seafoam green magnets. We have these on our website as well, but my favorite ones are the HD magnets, which are uh, blue instead. These are fine for general sewing, um, thinner layers of fabric, quilt blocks and such, but the Sotite's HD are stronger. Um, I think those are the best for bag making in my, in my personal opinion, because sometimes I need to have the magnet go through one or two layers of foam. And if that's the case, then uh, I need to use the Sotite's HD because the the regular ones are, are just not strong enough. So um, I will I must need to write that down on my list for a future demonstration. Uh, I'll take a look after the show. Sometimes I have trouble remember, remembering which items I've demonstrated on the show or not since we've been doing the show for uh, over four years now. Clovis said, would the iron hurt the side of the tool Oh, that's a good question. So I, I watched, I went to the designer's website for these acrylic templates uh, bef earlier in the week when I was practicing using the tool. And she was actually using a, a little travel iron up against the curve edge of the acrylic. When I was ironing, I'm sure I had some edges of my full-sized ironing touching the acrylic and I don't see anything melted down. I'm certainly not an acrylic expert, but uh, so far so good. You know, nothing out of out of the ordinary with that tool. Um, Jan says, do you have bags planned for these fabrics? That's a great question, Jan. So I don't yet have a, a plan for these fabrics, although in our Facebook group, I've seen the Tula Pink Curiouser and Curiouser fabrics used in a bunch of different projects. Some of them that come to mind, uh, I did see a at least one Tudor bag made in that fabric. So um, I'll have to put my thinking cap on and see what is the perfect project because as you know, I like using the large scale, the biggest scale prints the best. Vicki says, what marking pen do you recommend? So I use several and I can see that they're all, ah, some of them are in easy reach. Okay, so friction pens, I love using. Um, they generally disappear with the heat of an iron, but uh, at times it's a possibility for them to come back. So I wouldn't suggest marking, say, on uh, your quilt before quilting it, marking with the friction pen, because uh, in certain instances, like in cold weather, the marks can come back, but not the actual pen marks, just sort of like a ghostly white silhouette. So for the friction pens, I usually save these for marking on the wrong side of the fabric or areas of the bag that won't be seen in, when the bag is all finished. I love using them. I'm a big fan of just tracing my pattern pieces out with the friction pen and then cutting them out with scissors. So that's the main use for this. If I do need to mark on the fabric, the right side of the fabric or areas that will be seen in the finished bag, for instance, if I'm marking placement for straps, I always use either the Clover Choco uh, this is like a little chalk wheel over here. Or the Sew Line, I have a Sew Line pencil trio with three different colors of pencil and one of them being white. So either of those I'll use uh, for marking on those areas of the fabrics. Um, I'm sure I have a few more things, but these, these two are definitely my favorites. Um, Jessica wants to know, do you sell the HD magnets? Yes, we do sell um, the Sew Tights in three different uh, packets or groupings, including the Sew Tights HD, and you can find those at SewSweetness.com, and in the shop area, we have a Notion section. It'll be in that section, or you can just type in Sew Tights in the search box, and it's spelled uh, S-E-W-T-I-T-E-S. How often do you replace your Wonder Clips? I have had this same little, this is a little plastic container I got some years ago from Target. Uh, I haven't had the need to replace them. Actually, I have to be more fair and accurate. I actually have two of these containers because I bought um, probably one big pack of the Wonder Clips and two smaller packs. So I have a lot of Wonder Clips. Occasionally, I will break one. I had a few off-brand clips. Those broke before my regular Wonder Clips did. Occasionally, I will break one. I guess the, the spring after a few years might wear down, but other than that, I really haven't had to buy a new packet in yours. Kim says, do you interface your cork straps? So would you use the ribbon or twill tape in addition to the interfacing or instead of the interfacing? So I actually don't use uh, any interfacing for cork straps or for cork accents on bags. So for example, like a, a corner accent in a bag, I, I generally don't use interfacing for that. 
Um, I find that with cork or vinyl, it usually is sturdy enough with just either two or three layers. Um, the tool tape is a, a great option though for extra stability, especially for a heavy bag. If you're using the, just the two layers of the cork, um, it'll keep it from stretching or wearing down under the weight of all the things that you're putting inside your bag. Uh, another question, is it hard to work with cork? I actually love working with cork. I often will use my regular sewing machine for, foot for sewing with cork, but sometimes of the year, um, I'm not sure if humidity comes into play. Um, I'll need to switch out to my Teflon foot. So these days I usually just put it on there from the get-go if I'm sewing on top of the cork fabric. Um, I do have a video on my YouTube channel, How to Sew with Cork Fabric, and I go into detail um, and introduce some helpful tips and tricks uh, when working with cork, and a lot of those tricks can also be used when sewing with vinyl as well. Uh, Quilting in Romania wants to know, do you still interface the fabric with SF101 if you use the tool tape? So I think I would use, if I was um, in the instance of that quilting cotton strap with uh, the four layers of fabric where I press it kind of like double full bias tape. I do still like the Shape Flex SF101. I like the the strap feels just a little bit more substantial and the twill tape because it's so thin and same thing with the grow grain ribbon it doesn't really add extra bulk and I don't even really notice the difference that it's there but it does feel a lot more sturdy as far as uh, not that I would expect a strap to stretch but for sure it feels a lot more uh, in place, if you will, with that twill tape in there. Stacy wants to know, do you ever use strapping material inside your straps? There's a few patterns where I have used the nylon strapping and there's also cotton strapping out there for inserting into straps. Uh, I believe we have a video on the YouTube channel how to incorporate um, that nylon strapping inside uh, straps, such as straps made from quilting cotton. Um, our my pattern for the sewing machine travel bag does use the nylon strapping within uh, the quilting cotton just because uh, carrying a heavy sewing machine I wanted those straps to be super heavy duty and so um, I feel like that nylon strapping really gets you there with that. Kathy says cute shirt Sarah did you make it with your Cricut? Um, I actually did not make this I purchased it from a website called uh, yeah there you go Danny thank you um, this was purchased from a website called Daddy Dressed Me, and um, he's got lots of fun shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, uh, hats, buttons, all sorts of sewing themed gear on there. And again, the website's called uh, Daddy Dressed Me. Karen says, what bag would you recommend for a beginner? Great question, Karen. So I highly recommend the Baker Street bag. Uh, I feel like it's a beginner friendly bag, but it also has some details in there such as uh, working with a zipper, um, sewing through a curve. Um, it's a free pattern that you can find either on my YouTube channel or on my website and it's accompanied by a free video. Tammy says, are you going to do another book club? That was fun. Um, I love your uh, avatar graphic there, Tammy. Um, I guess I haven't uh, you know, I, I do keep a bunch of sewing themed books in my Amazon wish list, but I haven't read one in a little bit. So I will definitely keep you updated uh, when we have some new selections chosen for book club. Jan says, is there an alternative to the wool press mats? They look so helpful, but I'm allergic to wool. So I'm trying to think, um, Steady Betty makes a pressing mat that is wood. Um, I have it and I also have the Steady Betty pedals for my uh, sewing machine pedals. They work fantastic. Anyway, they're made out of wood and they're covered in foam, which is great for non-slip. Uh, it's great as a pressing mat. They have them available in several different sizes for pressing mats. And um, like I mentioned, the sewing machine pedals, I have those in two different sizes. So all of my sh machines have a Steady Betty foot pedal. Uh, let's, you know what, I can actually grab, hop down and grab one of my pedals. There you go. Uh, it's a little dirty because uh, obviously I'm using it for a foot pedal, um, but just so you can get a basic idea of what the pressing mats look like. So um, this is, um, as you can see, it discolored a bit, but I really don't care because it's on the ground. Uh, um, as you can see, it's got kind of two layers, but these are well anchored together. These are two pieces of wood and they're covered in uh, the foam. So like I mentioned, this is for my foot pedal, but they make larger sizes for pressing mats. And this would be a great alternative if you can't have 
um, that wool pressing mat. Fran says, would using the double-sided tape work the same as the ribbon or uh, tape so the strap is not wavy? Same as the ribbon or tape. Oh, oh, so you mean instead of the uh, grosgrain ribbon or the twill tape. You know what, I have not tried that, so I'd be curious. Uh, I guess I'll have to try that tonight after the show. Um, she was asking if the Dritz uh, Wash Away Wonder Tape, I think that's what you meant, um, the double-sided quarter of an inch tape can be used instead of the um, uh, twill tape. So I will say about that Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, it can kind of be pulled or torn. So if you're looking for the stability in the strap, you'll still need to um, use either the twill tape or the grill grain ribbon. Um, although it would be a good idea to, to, to use instead of the washable glue stick to anchor that down. But yes, I have uh, in the absence of scissors kind of pulled and torn that uh, Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape by hand. And so um, it's not the most sturdy of items. Plus it is water soluble. So if it ever got wet, it would just dissolve. Shannon says, any ideas on what is causing bird nesting? So, so frustrating on the bird nesting. It could be a few different things. Um, I am certainly not a sewing machine expert, but um, anytime I have something going on with my machine, the first two things I do, re-thread everything. So I'll re-thread my top thread, uh, open up my bobbin, replace the bobbin in there, make sure it's housed correctly. Um, change out my needle. Sometimes uh, if I haven't changed my needle in a while, I try to change it out every one or two projects, but um, sometime having an, sometimes having an older needle. However, if you have a, a better idea for her, let us know in the comments and we'll try to get some of those up on the screen, um, a solution for bird nesting of threads. <coughs> Dee says, what is the black and white bag and fabric to your left? So. That over there is the Super Bloom tote bag. The fabric is designed by Joel Dewberry. Um, that particular fabric is actually out of print, but there are other colorways still available over at Hawthorne Supply Company. And you can just type in either Joel Dewberry when you get over to Hawthorne Supply Company, or you can type in, um, I think the fabric line was called Birch Lane Antler Damask was the name of the actual fabric, Antler Damask. Um, Lots of pretty colorway options to choose from, although um, I don't think they still have the black and white over there. Bethany says, rivets, love them or hate them. I keep bending them. Oh, that's so frustrating. So first off, depending on the thickness of the materials um, in combination. So if you're putting a strap on top of the, say your main panel, the front and back of your bag, you might need to um, adjust, purchase rivets with different post length. So the rivets that I commonly use for bag making, and for me, these go fine through uh, a strap and like I said, the body of the bag, usually I'm attaching it to foam. I use eight millimeter rivets with six millimeter purse length. I have some longer rivets with, uh, I think a nine millimeter purse length, but um, you might need to adjust either up or down to a different uh, post length if yours are bending. Um, if you need help removing rivets after you've attached them, perhaps you've placed them in the wrong spot or the rivet went in crooked, which has happened to me before. Clum House has a fabulous rivet removal tool. And a few months ago, I made a video, you can find it on my YouTube channel, for how to use that rivet removal tool. You can, you can just go to the So Sweetness YouTube channel and type in riv rivet removal tool and you should uh, be able to find that video over there. Sarah says, any tips for preventing your strap fabric from sliding while top stitching? Mine tend to move sometimes even if I clip them well. So that's a great question. Um, if you wanted to use some of that Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, which I've done in the past, especially when um, top stitching uh, cork straps, um, that works well for holding the layers together. Honestly, I try my best to just get tons of wonder clips on the strap depending on how I'm feeling what material I'm using for that strap so um, you might have seen some of my videos sometimes I'll just load up the area with tons of wonder clips I'm not ashamed and if you saw Danny's little video from last week of the persimmon dumbly pouch that he made you probably saw he also had tons of wonder clips so you can never have too many wonder clips uh, in your project while you're working on it 
Barbara says, how do you close the bottom of your pocket the, at the end of making a bag without creating a lump? So um, either closing the ends of the pocket or closing the bottom of your lining if you've left a hole in the lining. Um, again, using lots of wonder clips is key. You can also um, use either some of that uh, washable glue stick that I shared with you earlier or that Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape to hold everything in place. Um, sometimes it's just helpful to get everything really smoothed out before you take it over to the sewing machine and using that washable glue stick uh, will help with that. Janice says, do you have an easy travel backpack pattern? So my backpacks, I have a few different backpack patterns. Um, the most popular is the Park Sling backpack. The Cumberland backpack is also a really nice, nicely shaped backpack. I personally like using the small Cumberland backpack for when I'm out and about. Uh, I feel like those are more intermediate projects just because they have more details, pockets, um, flaps, zipper features such as on the Park Sling backpack. Um, however, with the optional video, I feel like um, even some of the more advanced projects are completely doable if you just take it section by section. In my patterns, I have all of the sections uh, designated by headings. And if you just work on one section at a time, accompanied with the video, I think um, just about any pattern that you'd like to make would be within your grasp. Um, on the other hand, if you need to finish something in a hurry, um, perhaps an option would be, um, for example, on the Cumberland backpack. I saw a few people make some recently where they left the front flap and front pocket off. Um, leaving some of those extra items off of the backpack would make it faster if you need uh, a quicker sewing project. Pat says, what batting is your favorite to use for a baby quilt? That's a really great question and I am not a batting expert. Uh, lately I've had a few quilts uh, long armed and I generally just have the long armor choose. Uh, quilters, I do have a couple of uh, rolls of, not rolls, but like uh, pre-packaged Quilter's Dream batting. I've also used Pellon batting in the past. Um, I guess it comes down to personal preference, I suppose, and how thin or thick you want the finished quilt to be. Um, B says, is there a method for selecting fabrics for a project? Do you start with the accents, exterior, or lining? That's a great question, and I always spend tons of time agonizing over my fabric choices. I guess it really depends on the particular project and the size of the print um, and what other features are on that project. So for example, if it's a bag with handles that come across the front of the bag, a good question that I try to ask myself is, all right, well, is the print small enough so that the full print is going to be showing in between the straps? So for example, let's see if I can reach this. This is a good example. So this is a large scale print and this is a bag with the handles that come across the front. So I sort of went back and forth if I should use this print. Um, I did want it to be recognizable enough so that you could see, yes, it's a deer with antlers on the front, um, even though some of the antlers are cut off. But I feel like it's a small enough print that it's to, that this particular pattern does a good job featuring it. So. I guess I do spend some time thinking about the particular project. If it's a bag that you've not sewn before, perhaps read ahead in the instructions to see, um, such as in the case of the Super Bloom, all right, is this bag that I'm making, where are the handles, where are those going to be placed, and will I be able to fit the size of the design that I want in the bag? So those are all things that I spend a lot of time on. Color choices, sometimes I want the features of the bag to be able to still stand out. Pulling this bag in again, uh, I chose like pink fabric for the pockets. So you can kind of see the, the pink fabric like peeping out over the top just a little bit. I feel like it helps the, the, the print stand out from the rest of the bag just because the, the pockets are separate. So I don't know, I, I guess there's just no easy answer. Um, do your best and you know, sometimes I make a, a bag and I decide, you know, that really wasn't the best fabric choice, but there's always another day and always another bag. Marcia says, what is your favorite notion? There are so many. Um, my seam ripper for sure. Wonder clips I can't live without. 
the turning tools. I'd have to say the turning tools that we sell in the shop are all fantastic and I all use them in different instances. I think I saw the precision turning tool floating around here. I love the precision turning tool. I love the easy point and turner and I love the fast turn tool. Even those are, those are all called turning tools. I use them in different instances and I like having the option of having all three in my stash. So um, if you're not familiar with those three tools, you can find them on my website and in the shop product listing. I have posted a video for each one in the, that respective product listing demonstrating how to use that particular tool. So uh, yeah, the turning tools, I, I really love my turning tools. Angela says, any substitute for Decaville Light hard to find and expensive? So a really good substitute for Decaville Light is Pell & Decker Bond, which is number 809. I find that they're very similar, perhaps even doing uh, the two layers of Decker Bond instead of one. Um, I've made um, a bunch of projects in the, in the past where I just wanted something a little more substantial, and this was before I started using Decaville Light. And so I often doubled up the Decker Bond for two layers um, uh, of interfacing. And I would usually apply those following a layer of ShapeFlex to get the fabric nice and smooth and then Decker Bond. And I will usually cut that minus the seam allowance. If you're not familiar with Decker, Decoville Light or Decoville Heavy, I do have a video on my YouTube channel and you can just type in the So Sweetness channel. You can just type in Decoville in the search box and it's spelled D-E-C-O-V-I-L, and you can find that video over there. All right, Danny, are you calling in on the questions? All right, um, time to get over to the live giveaway. So um, I'm going to show all of the items included in the giveaway bundle, and then I'm going to give you one last chance to get in another comment uh, for me to draw a live winner. Again, this giveaway bundle will be drawn to one lucky winner randomly drawn and we're giving it away live so i've put together a few photographs of the items in this prize package and then i'm going to be showing a few additional things on the overhead camera so uh, go ahead danny you can go ahead and start the photographs this rivet press uh, courtesy of minkus margo um, the embroidery kit from kiriki press and also an embroidery kit from uh, little deer there we go. There's uh, another graphic. A bolt of uh, Pellon Peltex interfacing. That one's from my stash. A $25 gift, cer $25 gift certificate from buyannie.com. As you know, she has soft and stable interfacing. A Crafty Gemini bag class and interfacing bundle. I'll talk about that more in just a second. LDH prism colored snips, and I have these exact snips in my stash. <clears throat> A $40 gift certificate for Pink Door Fabrics. And um, a Freezer Paper Masterclass from Brian House Quilts. I purchased this one earlier this year and it's fantastic. And then um, a $50 gift certificate from Stash Fabrics. Okay, so a few things that I wanted to mention about these prizes. First off, an additional prize courtesy of my mom when we started talking about these yes <laughs> oh okay uh so this one's for my mom it's a brand new copy of big city bags and she wanted to donate this uh for our uh giveaway celebration i will sign this uh copy of the book uh before it makes its way to its new home uh, this book is out of print it was my first book and i was asking my mom the other day because she told me Oh, I'll give you a copy of Big City Bags for your giveaway. Uh, she said, I have three. I think she said, I have three. And then I, then I was wondering the other day, and I, I was like, Mom, why do you have so many copies of this book? And she said, oh, when it first came out, I bought some extra ones on uh, Amazon. So I was like, okay. Um, so this is in addition to those other items that we showed in that photo slideshow. Some other things that I wanted to show on the overhead camera, if Danny could just switch out for just a moment. Um, the, the embroidery kits from Kiriki Press are these three. So it's a raccoon, an elephant, and this stitch lamp sampler. And then the kits from Little Deer are uh, these two embroidery kits, uh, a bunny and a unicorn. I think that's all I had to show on the overhead camera. I wanted to mention, Danny, you could switch back to the front camera. 
I wanted to mention a few things about some of the items uh, that I just mentioned. Um, the bag class from Crafty Gemini and the interfacing bundle from Crafty Gemini. The interfacing bundle includes uh, Bozal Interform, Bozal Fusible Batting, Bozal Fashion Fuse, and Bozal Dura Fuse. So that's all included and the bag course from Crafty Gemini is a bag course of your choice and you can um, additionally you can find lots more bag courses on the Crafty Gemini website as well as the interfacings that I just mentioned over at Crafty Gemini. Um, pink door fabrics, people ask me often uh, where I purchase fabrics from online because they can't find things locally that they like. Um, pink door fabrics and stash fabrics are both sponsoring prizes for this giveaway and um, they have an amazing selection. I purchase from both of them all the time. Um, so check out both of those shops. I have links to all of the things that I mentioned in the description. So if there's something that caught your eye that I was talking about or you'd just like to learn a little bit more about it, after the show, check the links in the description and you can find out more information there and see all of the products from these small businesses. So please do check them out and tell them that Sarah says hello. Um, I think that's, is that all? Oh, I wanted to give you one more chance to get a comment in. So um, here's another additional question for you that you can answer in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube. What is your favorite summer activity? Let me know in the comments. Um, my favorite summer activity is looking at the birds and wild animals in the yard and also I love going swimming. I love horseback riding but I prefer riding in the fall or winter when it's cooler because I get really warm when I'm riding. Even when I'm riding in the winter I'll ride in a t-shirt and everyone is wearing vests and long sleeves but I, I'll be in a t-shirt so um, I love riding but I prefer other seasons for it um, if you will. So. Um, I'll give, I guess I'll give everyone, um, Hey Sarah, what's that, that behind you on your right shoulder? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I did mention that, um, out of these three giveaways in July, I mentioned that one of the giveaway may be for a Juki sewing machine. So there, you will want it. Is that the new Juki? It's a brand new Juki. It's from so many things. As you can see, it's still boxed and has the, you know, the wrapping around the outside of the box. That's going to be the giveaway, the live giveaway for next Sunday's show. So you'll, you'll want to make sure to tune in live next Sunday because someone's going to be walking away, other hand, with that brand new Juki sewing machine. And I'm going to show you some uh, close-up details about that machine um, next Sunday during the show. So you'll want to tune in for that. However, the prizes for tonight's live giveaway are also fantastic. Uh, the retail value of all those items is $664 and one lucky winner is going to win all of those prizes. So um, good luck to everyone. Danny, is it okay to draw a winner? Ready when you are. Okay, so oh just as I did last week, um, the drawing is completely random, so our um, software that puts out our videos compiles all of the comments from YouTube and Facebook. So the comments are compiled in pages of 20. So what I usually do for any live giveaway is Danny tells me to draw a number between one and whatever. 659. One and 659. So that means 659 pages. 663. Whatever. 659 pages of 20 comments. So multiply 659 times 20. So that's how many comments there were. So I'm going to give him two numbers. The first number will be the page the comments on. The second number will be number the comments on, number one through 20. Um, just so everyone's aware, it's completely, uh, I have, I, I'm not seeing the comment screen. Uh, all right, Danny, again. One is 673 now. All right, I'm going to pick, uh, shoot, 175. All right, 175. And I'll pick uh, number seven. Three, six, seven. Nancy! Mm -hmm. Nancy Clavette, congratulations to you, Nancy. Please email me after the show so that we can get you connected with all of those wonderful prizes. My email is sarahetsosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Again, congratulations to you, Nancy. Congrats, Nancy. Nancy. Yay! 
Oh, and don't forget, tune in next Sunday for uh, the <laughs> the Juki live giveaway. Um, I can't wait to show you that machine. I'm so excited for that giveaway. So thank you everyone so much for watching Social Sunday. Uh, I hope you had a great time. I had a super fun time uh, preparing and presenting tonight's show. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.